On today's show, we have the amazing Daryl Green. He's a drummer hailing from Oakland, California, joining us. Daryl attended Cal Arts, then he moved to New York to attend the Manhattan School of Music. And as you all know, as a musician and artist, sometimes the music just calls you in. He's performed with Dr. Lonnie Smith, Pharaoh Sanders. Who was the first major artist you performed with? Um, the first artist I performed with that was major to me was, it was a singer, and she's still around actually in the Bay, Bay Area. Her name is Faye Carroll. She's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And that was the first major artist I played with, and she took me under her wings, and she actually helped. Believe it or not, she taught me a lot about drums. Wow. And um, I learned that's a lot of my foundation as well, was mm -hmm. studying with Faye Carroll, playing with her. And, you know, I learned about all the shuffles and mm -hmm. the different kind of shuffles and the roughs and all these little uh, nuances that made, yeah. you know, the music, you know. And I learned a lot from her. She's still around. And another, and the next step in my life, once I moved to New York, a mm -hmm. uh, big artist I played with uh, was Farrell Sanders. Wow. And that was an experience too, you know, to be on the stage with such a, mm -hmm. you know, musical legend, you know, in my opinion. Right. And uh, I, re I remember the first gig, you know, everything was fine. We was in Japan and, I, uh, you know, we didn't really have a rehearsal. We kind of talked through the music and everything was cool and I was cool da, 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 and we got on stage and Farrell did an intro, you know, before mm -hmm. the band came in. And at that moment, I could feel myself lock up, and I was just like, wow, I'm playing with Pharaoh Sanders, you know? Right. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like, I never felt that, you know, locking up like that, like, wow. Right. And then I had to catch myself, like, okay, you know, pick, you know, right. it's almost time to come in, you know? Right, right, right. But that was a, you know, great experience, great experience. Yeah. See, those, those are amazing uh, life lessons that I'm, I'm really glad you're speaking about because lots of people, drummers and many musicians, you know, sometimes we don't get a chance to really hear that from artists, like all the life experiences we get, especially what you said about uh, working with Faye Carroll and how she taught you many things about the drums, yes. you know. The, the, the person that taught me more about cymbals than any drummer was Ernie Andrews. <laughs> Just playing with him, learning that... Um, the sound of the cymbal, mm -hmm. how staying out of the range of the vocalist was right. just beautiful. And you know, many times as drummers, people say, I don't like that cymbal. But I learned after working with him that it wasn't really the cymbal, it was the tone, it was the pitch. Right, right. One of the biggest things that I'll say I learned about practicing was, you know, is about being able to focus. It's not mm -hmm. so much the amount of time, but it's the amount of focus you can put in. You know, if you can mm -hmm. just really concentrate you know, and, and know exactly where where you want to hit, like what spots you're trying to hit or what you're trying to get to, mm -hmm. then I find that it, it's more effective. You know, you can get a lot done. And also, uh, I practice a lot when I'm not at the drums, you mm -hmm. know, a lot mentally. And sometimes I, I go to sleep thinking about things, you know. Yeah. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> and then when I sit down, it's already worked out, you know. That's true. And, um, you know, a lot of part of practicing when you're younger is just getting the facility. Mm -hmm. But then as you get older, I think that a lot of it becomes more conceptual. So you can kind of conceptually figure things out because you, you have the facility. Right. So right. now it's just about, you know, developing, you know, what you already have. Right. And, um, you know, I try to make use of that time, you know, from the hotel rooms, uh, airplane, like you said. Yeah. Or one time on an airplane, man, I guess I was... I was doing some feet stuff, and Sherman was sitting in front of me. He was like, man, you shaking my seat, man. And right. I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Right. You know, so, you know, wherever I could fit it in, I get it in. But when I'm home, you know, I really try to take advantage of that time home to yeah. be able to sit down and practice. Or, right. you know, sometimes uh, on the road, I'll, I'll go to the club, and I'll just, you know, stay at the club all day and practice until it's time for the hit. So today's hip tip is what's in the bag? <laughs> now many times as drummers we have a stick bag, so we have a small stick bag and people say, wow, you got a big stick bag. Why do you got all that stuff in your bag? 
if I'm going on the road, I probably have about six or eight pairs of sticks. Mm -hmm. And I uh, and I probably have maybe two to three different uh, kind, you know, right. uh, sizes or whatever, just in case, you know, for the venue or the sound, depending where mm -hmm. we're playing. And um, and I always have, you know, brushes and mallets. Right. So we got brushes. We got the brushes here. Can you show them the brushes, right. Daryl? Brushes. And we got the mallets. Do you carry any sounds with you? Like sometimes I carry different sounds. Like I mean, I, you never know when you'll need a. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, these are some of those gigs. Like we talk about the avant garde gigs. Right, and, right. You know, I, I have from whistles <laughs> to you know bells. And this is a pretty neat thing. I travel with sometimes. They give them out at the bank, and these are little clips. Because sometimes you're at an outdoor festival, and you're always trying to figure out how to hold my music. This is the notorious thing that I think we both can agree on. We get to the gig, and the biggest thing that's never there is what? The clutch. The, the clutch. clutch. <laughs> <laughs> the clutch. And we got the felts here. And I know you're a big fan about felts. I know you carry a oh, lot yes. of felts all the time. Why do you carry felts, Daryl? Well, the majority of the time when I'm wherever I'm playing, the cymbal stands don't have felts or the, or the washers, uh -huh. you, know, you know, the little sleeves that go on to protect the cymbal. Right. So here's the felts right here, these little brown things here. Mm -hmm. And here are the little washers here just to show the audience what we're talking about. And why is it, Daryl, that it's important? Because many people don't know why it's important. You know, sometimes you see cymbals and they have these little grooves worn out in them. And oh, oh yeah, because it, it'll make the keyhole. I call them keyholes. Uh -huh. You know, uh, the the metal on metal, and usually a cymbal that's a kind of an angle either way, and then it'll just wear on the, right. that hole. And I'm, right. I'm trying to preserve my symbols. <laughs> right, right. 